motion in one dimension, derivatives of polynomials. This tutorial is designed for students in general physics who are concurrently taking calculus and may not have had the rules for derivatives of polynomials by the time you need them in physics class to find the velocity and the acceleration. If you look in your typical calculus textbook for the polynomial rule of derivatives, you'll probably find something like this. For a function of x equal to x to the power n, the derivative of that function of x with respect to x is equal to n times x to the power n minus 1. But what does this mean and how does it help us find velocities and accelerations? To start with, in physics, we're not dealing with some generic function of a variable x. We're dealing with very specific functions of time. So we're first going to change our general rules here to use specifically a function of time, which is a power t to the n, and the derivatives with respect to time of those functions. Now the functions we're using in physics are position as a function of time, velocity as a function of time, and acceleration as a function of time. And that velocity as a function of time is equal to the derivative of the position with respect to time. And the acceleration as a function of time is a derivative of the velocity with respect to time. Now when you hear people pronounce these equations, you might hear them use a shortened form, such as v equals dx dt. But remember that that dx dt is the derivative with respect to time of x the position function. You're always doing a mathematical operation when you're doing the derivative. So let's look at some examples. We'll take our general definitions and keep them down here at the bottom. If I have a position equation where the position as a function of time is equal to t cubed, then my velocity as a function of time is the derivative with respect to time of that specific function t cubed. According to our polynomial rule, that power 3 comes out front, and my power is then reduced by 1, 3 minus 1, and that simplifies down to 3t squared. So if I start with a position t cubed, my velocity is 3t squared. Here's another example. Let's say I've got position as a function of time equal to t squared. Well, the velocity is the derivative of t squared. By our polynomial rule, the 2 comes out front. I've got 2 minus 1, which is just 1. And 2, t to the 1, is the same thing as 2t. Now there's a couple of examples that might be a little more tricky. So for example, what if I had 5t squared? Well, then my derivative is the derivative of 5t squared, and that 5 comes out front, but I still have the same derivative of t squared. And so instead of 2t, I now have 10t. So we can handle t squared, t cubed. You do a t to the fifth and a t to the sixth the same way, and we can handle it with any arbitrary number out front. Even if it's a negative number, the negative number stays out front. Here's an example of just 4t. Now to start with, you're like, well, what's the power? But 4t is the same thing as 4t to the first power. So when we take our derivative of 4t to the 1, 4 stays out front. The power that comes down is just a 1. And my t is now t to the 1 minus 1. So 4t to the 0. But t to the 0 is the same thing as 1, so my derivative is just 4. So if I start with a position of x equals 4t, I end with v equals 4. What if I started with a position of just 4? Constant number. Doesn't change with time. Well, as we just talked about, that's like 4 times 1, and 4 times 1 is the same thing as 4t to the 0. So we're taking the derivative of 4t to the 0, and that power 0 comes out front, and then it doesn't matter what else you've got. 
So if you start with some constant, you end with a velocity of 0. Now this makes sense when we remember what the derivative is really doing is measuring how our function is changing. And a constant position's not changing. So my velocity is 0. If I always have the same position, I'm not moving. Now that we have all of our little pieces, let's try a more complicated example. Say a position as a function of time, which has more than one term, 5 minus 4t squared plus 2t cubed. Well, then my velocity is the derivative with respect to time of that entire function. Luckily, with our derivative rules, we can break that up. Take the derivative with respect to time of 5, the derivative with respect to time of minus 4t squared, and the derivative with respect to time of 2t cubed. Now, we've seen all of these. The derivative of the constant just becomes 0. For the one where you've got the squared, our number comes out front, minus 4 times 2t. And then we've got 2, 3t squared. 3t squared is the derivative of t cubed. And this whole thing simplifies down to a velocity of just minus 8t plus 6t squared. We don't have to keep the 0 in there, and we multiply out our constants in front of the other numbers. Now let's say we wanted to take it just one step further. Let's take our position and our velocity that we just found, and let's find the acceleration too. Well, my acceleration as a function of time is the derivative with respect to time of my velocity equation. So my minus 8t plus 6t squared goes into here. Again, we can break that derivative down term by term. The derivative with respect to time of minus 8t, the derivative with respect to time of 6t squared. Minus 8t becomes just minus 8. 2 comes out front, multiplied by the 6, which gives me 12t. So if I have a position as a function of time, which is a polynomial, I can find the velocity as a function of time by taking the derivative once. And I can find the acceleration as a function of time by taking the derivative a second time. That's why sometimes you'll call hear the acceleration called the second derivative of the position. Hope this helps explain things. Good luck with all your physics problems.